they'll create value for everyone and it will generate opportunities that you can choose to participate in or not. And that's how I look at it. I'm creating yeah. value all the time with everybody that yes. I interact with. And lo and behold, they want me to get involved with different things. I see opportunity yeah. and it comes out. Now, there's quite a few folks out there that aren't genuine like you that they say, I give and how come nothing's coming back to me? And oh. they're giving and scorekeeping to get, they're leaning in to create value. Now you could say, hey, create value for everybody. Opportunities come up and then I get something because I can go participate in, in those. So it's all semantics and it's how you approach it. So you can say one thing that sounds morally really good, but you can also weaponize it and use it under false pretenses. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have with us Lee Benson. Lee grew his first company, Able Aerospace, from three to 500 employees with 15 consecutive years of 20% compounded average annual growth before his exit. Next, he founded Execute to Win, ETW to help senior leadership teams experience similar results. Welcome to our show, Lee. Shayed, it's very good to be here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I love the background. I know I just mentioned before we started recording, you dabble in music as well. Oh yeah. One, one of my power hobbies is music. Back in the 1980s, I think I have over a thousand nights performing oh, on wow. stages crowds as small as the cook and the bartender because nobody showed up or thousands <laughs> for bigger shows really yeah that's so wonderful I, so I still play I, rec I record it's a great way to build and convey emotional energy and emotional yeah. value that way yeah. how important is emotion to you in business I think about value creation in three ways. Most people hear value creation and they say, oh, it's all about the money. Nope. There's three macro buckets that I look at. One is material value. So it's cash flow, it's profit, it's things that are accumulated. Second, and I think the most important and the scarcest commodity in my view is emotional energy value. The more emotional energy value that's positive that we create in the workspace and the environment, that's what people really get behind. They can tell when leaders are really there for them and there's always a positive way forward, no matter how rough the times get. And then the third bucket is spiritual. And so spiritual value is going to be something different for everyone. It could be your religion, could be general connectedness. It could just be love that you have out there. So I, I think of it in those three buckets and everything I do is about creating value that I'm actually on my seventh company. I've started from scratch. This one here, Execute to Win, has been primarily focused on creating value in organizations for profit and nonprofit. And now we're getting interest from government organizations to have us come in and help them as well. But it's total value creation, not just money. Yeah. Yeah, that's great because I feel there is this support when it comes to the emotions in a business. So meaning when we add more value, meaning value for others, and we were talking about this right before we started recording, is that good things start happening when you lead with value. And would you like to elaborate on that or talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. I think that when we're interacting with others in the business world, that we should be thinking about win-win value creation. So when both parties mm -hmm. win coming out the other side, you can sustain and grow that almost indefinitely, right? Mm -hmm. And I think companies should only focus on that creating value for the customers. And when I go back to Able Aerospace, the company that you cited earlier, what an amazing journey. And all we focused on was creating more and more value for the customers. And we had a mission statement that was designed to do two things. One, in a compelling way, it would tell our customers why they should do business with us. And it would tell every employee why they get a paycheck. Because if we don't create this value, we, our jobs are in jeopardy. 
And the mission statement, short form, was to safely reduce aircraft operating costs. And I had customers that would come in and, and say, hey, your mission statement saved us so much money, I was able to buy additional helicopters. And we repaired, overhauled, and manufactured <laughs> aircraft parts for maintenance in the aftermarket for large commercial helicopter operators and fixed wing operators that everybody here would know, Delta Airlines, United American, et cetera. And the really cool part about this is we had really large competitors coming after us. We had core products we focused on and we were doing business in 60 countries. We had about 2000 customers and these large billion dollar plus competitors would come after us and they could never figure out how to win. And they just missed the secret recipe, which is focus on creating value for the customers, not playing yeah. games to try to take work away from a competitor. They focused so much on us. I just knew they would lose yeah. because they focus on the customer. Yeah. It's very common though in business. It's very common. Yeah. It's amazing. I even spoke recently at Phoenix Startup Week and it's about new entrepreneurs. They've got everything launching. And the title of my talk was Startup Mindset, the difference between a 90% chance of failure and a 90% chance plus of success. And why do over 90% of them fail? It's because they want to play startup. They're not really interested in leaning in and creating real value in the world. Mm. That's the difference. And there were a number of folks there, I don't know, 30 to 50, I don't really remember exactly. And there was only one woman that I talked to that, wow, I'd like to learn more. And that's a company I, I would likely invest in. Love the idea, love the way she was passionately talking about how this would create value in the world. Everybody else, what do you need to see in my PowerPoint presentation to make you give us money? They're playing startup. And so they, again, the secret sauce like you and I had talked about is focus only on creating more and more value with your customers. And that's it. That's the whole yeah. recipe. I learned this when I was going through a, a mindset program about leading with value. And this podcast is a product of that. So what I did is I shifted that from get mentality to give. So this whole concept of bringing entrepreneurs on here, helping them share their message in the marketplace adding value to the listeners and the guests and anyone who interacts with me has been great because I find that opportunities just show up with the least amount of effort. I don't hustle. I don't feel like I'm hustling like I used to. I just take it easy. I don't look at life as too serious mm -hmm. anymore. It's more fun. It's more loving and it's just more giving. And I see mm -hmm. things just coming around. Can you talk about that based on your experience? What do you feel that could be happening? Yeah. So I, I modify the language a bit. You and I are saying the same thing. And I just say, mm -hmm. look, go create value for everyone. And it will generate opportunities that you can choose to participate in or not. And that's how I look at it. I'm creating yeah. value all the time with everybody that yes. I interact with. Yes. And lo and behold, they want me to get involved with different things. I see opportunities yeah. and it comes out. Now, there's quite a few folks out there that aren't genuine like you that they say, I give and how come nothing's coming back to me? And they're, oh. they're giving and scorekeeping to get. They're not, oh. they're not leaning they're giving in. giving to get. Yeah, they're leaning in to, to create value. Now, you could say, hey, create value for everybody, opportunities come up, and then I get something because I can go participate in, in those. So it's all semantics, and it's how you approach it. So you can say one thing that sounds morally really good, but you can also weaponize it and use it under false pretenses. But at the end yeah. of the day, I think you and I are saying the same thing. Let's create value, mm -hmm. and there'll be opportunities that come up that we can choose to participate in or not. And when I look at my current business, Execute to Win or ETW, there's a few things that we do. One, we help organizations implement something that I developed over my 40-year journey. I, I call it my 40-year overnight success story, where it's called the MIND methodology, that it's, which stands for most important number and drivers. And I wrote a book. It was published a little over a year ago titled Your Most Important Number. And the mm -hmm. entire methodology is in there. So we help companies implement that. And then the next thing that we do is we run CEO mastermind groups. We call them execute. 
and we limit it to eight and we apply the mind methodology to keep every CEO at that critical point where they need to be to create the most value in their organizations at any point in time. It's radically different than the bigger groups like YPO, EO, Vistage, and everything else out there. And the results are just fantastic. And then the third thing is investment. When I see opportunities and people need money and because they're using the mind methodology, I can see significantly under the covers what's going on. It gives me investment opportunities that others don't have. And so all of these are win-win, every one of those things. And those are the things that as long as it's a win-win exchange of value, you can sustain it for a really long time, if not ever. And I believe, just thinking about your listeners, the number one job of a CEO or founder of an organization is to continually increase the value of that organization. So how do you do that? And this whole most important number and drivers concept would say, there's one number for the organization that says above all others, you're winning or losing the game and it will drive the majority of the right behaviors. And so in the for-profit world, it's usually net profit or some version of profit like EBITDA or cash flow of their capital intensive. And then people will say, it can't just be about the money. Everything else is subordinate to a measure of the value of your organization. So it really is the right measure and culture and people, leadership, everything else. If you don't do those things well that people want to focus on, then you won't have the cash flow or profit. Does that make sense? Yes, 100%. How do you tailor the mind methodology to different types of companies, for example, a startup or an established corporation? Yeah, and in startups, the most important number will generally evolve. So initially, it could just be our most important number is hitting this launch date with this minimum value product that we have. And then once that happens, maybe it's users if it's a software company. And then they'll get to a certain point where it's going to go into profit or cash flow or shareholder value or something along those lines. Once an organization is established, how do you measure the value of that organization? If you've got a smaller, medium-sized business and you want to position it to sell for the highest possible price at any point in time, it's probably going to be EBITDA, something along those lines where you mm. would sell it for a multiple. And then you want to manage really well so you get the highest possible multiple in there. And once a company is established, it, again, it'll be at the top, cash flow or profit. But once you start going down through the organization, every single department, function, team will have their own most important number that does two things. One, it says above all others, you're winning or losing the game. And when yours improves, it should improve the next one up and accrete all the way to the top of the organization. And second, and really important, it has to drive the majority of the right behaviors. And so when you pick a number for a team, do an exercise. How will this number help us with behaviors it drives and how will it harm our value creation with the behaviors it drives? And that's how you zero in on it and all the teams have to come up with their own number. So coming up with your own number, I don't get that part. Can you explain? Oh, sure, sure. So let's say I'm running HR in a company. We've got 100 employees or 1,000 employees. I'm in charge of human resources, right? So what would be the one number for HR that says above all others were winning or losing the game? What would that be? And usually when I work with the team to come up with that number, they always say it's one like of two gauge. things. Yeah, they'll say one of two things. It's going to be retention or it's going to be engagement. So, okay, let's see if it will drive the right behaviors. So hypothetically, if you put me in charge of HR, and after three years, I have 95% retention and nobody has that. I'm, oh my gosh, we've won big time. Oh, wait a minute. 80% of our employees or team members can't perform the outcome-based responsibilities for their role. So it didn't drive the right behaviors. So the most important number for HR that I really like is the percentage of seats or roles filled with capable people. Now we're driving all the right behaviors. We're hiring better. We're training better. We're giving leaders the tools they need to constantly develop their people. And if we had 100 employees or 1,000 employees and 80% of them were performing in their roles and achieving their outcome-based responsibilities, then we're at 80%. 
So what do we need to do to get to 85% and then 89 and keep working towards 100? Mm -hmm. And every single function can go through that exercise, whether it's finance or sales or marketing. Sales would say, it's got to be just revenue. Obviously, all revenue isn't created equal. We could sell $10 million, make a cost of $15 million to produce the service or product. That didn't yeah, work. That and, didn't and work. So again, that most important number, tell me why this is the one number that says you're winning or losing and why it will drive the majority of the right behaviors. And then the drivers, these are categories of work that each team should be really good at leveraging to improve their most important number. And that's why we call it the most important number and drivers methodology. So what I want to know when I go to work with a new client, and I think this is what every senior leader would want to know in an organization for a team, here's your leader, here's a team. How do you create value for the organization? Explain to me that. And if they say, here's our most important number, here's where we started, here's where we're going in terms of measuring that number, here's where we're at today. And at any point in time, I can show you whether we're on track at risk or behind or hopefully overdriving. And then here's our drivers or categories of work that myself as a leader and my team are leveraging to improve it. This is the best work that we're doing to stay on track with our most important number or goal setting up there. It, wouldn't it be nice to know that for every team? Yeah. How do you create value and what's the best work you're doing to continually increase that value over time? I think it's a, it's such a simple, elegant way mm -hmm. to bolt every team together within an organization that works. You think about sporting teams out there. There's the score that says we're winning or losing the game. Yay. And we're measuring 20 or 30 other things, like how fast we run the ball, catch the ball, all the other things that go into it. But we're only measuring those things to get better or make better decisions to improve our most important number. That's how people like to work. It, it, in my experience, doesn't feel very good to use traditional goal setting where, hey, every team member, every quarter, create two or three goals, get it approved by your manager and rinse and repeat. Then they're looking for the right it's goal. It's more dynamic. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, there's the score. Here's Complete. the work that we're doing. And it's constant, right? Whereas the other traditional goal setting, it feels terrible. And when you go audit the goals and companies, I don't care how much a CEO says, oh, I love our goal setting process. When I go look at the goals, over 90% of them without failure are just not very thoughtful and not aligned with creating the most value that team member could actually create. Yeah. With this methodology, it's more defined. It's more streamlined of what they're looking at. It's more clear. And you can make a lot better improvements when there's more clarity. I agree with you 100%. One of the questions that I encourage senior leaders to ask team members throughout their organizations is, how do you create value for the organization? And most of the time, what they get is a job description. That's mm. not value. And if somebody says, oh, as a leader, let me show you. Here's my team's most important number. Here's the progress we're making. Here's where we're going. And this is the best work that we're doing to improve it. This is how I create value. Or let's say they're a non-supervisory or non-leader, great performing team member and says, oh, let me show you. This is my team's most important number. Here's my role. Here are my three outcome-based responsibilities, which is the best work that I can do as far as my part to improve our team's most important number. And they get excited about it, right? Wouldn't that yeah. be amazing? So different than virtually yeah. any organization that I run into that isn't using the MIND methodology. Wonderful. But I may have the answer to this, but just in case an audience, if someone would like to know, but are there any limitations or any challenges that you're aware of when you're implementing this process? Yeah, first and foremost, I believe that organizations should have an intentional way of creating value that they agree to. Mm -hmm. and you, you call it a management operating system, whatever you want to call it. And there's a lot of popular operating systems out there. There's, there's 40X, there's Scaling Up, there's EOS, there's OKRs, there's a bunch of them. And I believe that their biggest limitation is that they make process more important than what is most important. People are following the process. And I hear CEOs say regularly, everybody's hitting their goals, but the company isn't going anywhere. So they're following the process and they make it about that. 
with this methodology, I wanted something that would work for 80% plus of all teams anywhere, any type of organization of any size. And you don't any need a industry. Super, any industry, don't need a superstar leader in the room. As an organization, how do we create value? How are we designed to create value in the world? It's decentralized. T totally. And whether there's three or, I love the way you said that. That's a great yeah. way to talk about it. I think of it as team out, like you can start anywhere and go yeah. everywhere and creating mm -hmm. value in organizations. But whether you've got one team, five teams, hundreds of teams, like, like the largest organization that I've ever worked with, this methodology has 40,000 plus employees. And you've got hundreds and hundreds of teams all bolted together. And you could see in seconds what their most important number is and the best work they're doing to improve it. Now they create value. So all of this just maps to the entire organization, bolts together eloquently, and, and it's an intentional way of creating value. Now, some yeah. people would say, why, why do I need to do this? And if not this, what is your way of creating value? Creating, your, yeah, go ahead. Creating value also will create more revenues. Yeah, more, more revenue, cash flow. That's what I mean. Profit. So to that yeah, so to that point, you know, why do I need this is going to help with the bottom line. Like it's well, going it's to help. help with the profits and it's going to help with the revenue growth overall. I think it goes back to total value creation. Total it creates, value, yeah. It, it creates huge opportunities for every team member in the organization because the stronger we are from a cash flow and profitability standpoint, the more secure our jobs are the faster we can grow because it's really resonating with our customers and more good things are accreting to us. And it's total value creation for team members, for ownership in the company, shareholders, and our customers. And it goes back to material value, emotional energy value, and spiritual value. And it's all tied together. But the measure, again, of the value of an organization is in the for-profit world, it's going, to be, it's going to be profit or cash flow. And, and that's not a bad thing. It's a really good thing. We, the stronger that is, the stronger everything else is. And if we don't get, again, culture and leadership and all the other stuff right, you don't stand a chance of optimizing what you can do there from a value creation standpoint. Yes. Could you share any steps or any type of guidance to anybody that has a business, has a small team, they're listening to this episode that they can start implementing right away before they even think about contacting you. They could do immediately to improve things following this methodology. Yeah, I, I, that's a great question. I have countless stories that come in weekly from people around the world where leaders read the book, Your Most Important Number, which outlines all of this. So that's and the best recommendation, obviously. It, to get it, the book too. Yeah, it's a good place to start. And the last chapter mm -hmm. in the book is a DIY chapter. But what they say to me is, and that's what I want. I want this to go into millions of organizations. I don't need to be good. part of doing it. I just, I want them to do it. But what they say is, it used to be everybody had a bunch of numbers and we'd always miss it a little bit and we're pushing hard at the end of the month. And now after just a few months of every leader having one most important number, this is above all others, you're winning and losing the game and describes the value that you create. Now we're overdriving every month. And it's just been a couple of months. And it's not uncommon wow. for folks to say in four to six months, we've I can doubled our business because yeah. of this focus. You said it really well earlier, the clarity around yeah. this North Star, this uh, description of how we create value as a company and every team in the company. Of course, everybody's going to perform better. Like how many employees and companies out there know exactly what to do to create value at every point in time. It's pretty darn small. They're looking small. for guidance. They're looking for options. They're looking for areas where they can implement something like this, but there's just cherry pick, not a well-defined, complete system that covers everything that anyone in a snap can see where they stand on a day-to-day -day basis. They can actually work towards achieving what they need to achieve on a consistent daily basis. Sometimes when you're going after a goal, which is great, you don't see that what's happening on a consistent, on a daily basis, for example, you're just focusing on the end goal, but this gives you that visibility ongoing. I like it. This is probably one of the most interesting methods 
that I came across so far because it, it's well defined in a way that it, it covers all angles when you're trying to lead with value, if that makes sense. Yeah, completely. And a great first step is reading the book, the audio yeah. book. I record 25 minute interviews after each chapter for even more background and insights. And if you want some, we have a lot of free content on our website, which is etw.com. And you can order the book there, but you can also get the book anywhere you can buy books. It's in 40,000 different channels. It's a Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller. So you can get it. You can get it anywhere. But go to the website if you want more information, etw.com. Great, Lee. It was wonderful having you on the show today. Thank you so much for sharing this wisdom. I'm sure it's going to help people, the ones that actually participated in this episode. And if you have audience and you feel like someone can actually benefit from this, please share. You could tell that Lee is not just trying to get a client here. He's actually leading with values. But he's telling you to get the book where it can give you all the do-it-yourself steps and the guidance and everything to implement this. But something like this could completely transform an organization. What he's saying here, if you really understand the information, I know we didn't really go deep into it because our episodes are usually 20, 25, 30 minute episodes, but definitely I'd love to have you back, Lee, if you wanted to talk more about this, we could, because it, it, it's exciting. I'm excited after what you shared. Thank you. And Shahid, thank you for having me and I'm happy to help you any way that I can. Thank you, Lee. And audience, thanks again. And appreciate you guys helping us grow.